Flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Good morning, everybody. It's 8 30 here, Saturday morning. Used to be Johnny Wise Mueller at 9 30 with Tarzan Theater. But those days are gone forever. So is old poor old Johnny. And uh, does anybody talk about Tarzan anymore? Kids are into space now and cyberspace and everything else. I don't know if they're, they're cheering on some uh, uh, ape man that uh, wrestles rhinos and gorillas and everything else. Anyhow, here we are. It's overcast, but it's warm, 13 degrees uh, Celsius. So what is that in the real world? It's 26 and 38 and 58, almost 60 degrees. And so we're off to a pretty good start, temperature-wise. I was out there doing the poor man's treadmill, dragging the tire. And uh, it's a nice day. Anyhow, sure better than it was a month ago with the snowbanks, eh? Northwestern Ontario is full of surprises. Well, I got a verse for you this morning. It's the, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. It's uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. So the wicked flee when no, when no man pursueth. So <clears throat> the inference there is that it's okay to flee if somebody is chasing you. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, boy, does that ever sum our society up today? Now, what, what do we have to be terrified about? Well, for two years, we were uh, told... Uh, to be afraid, be very afraid, and uh, it was going to, it was a, 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 a virus that was going to rub us all off the face of the earth, we didn't, <laughs> and the, those of us who did get sick uh, managed to survive <laughs> and get uh, natural immunity and who knows what else, eh? So we come through that, now... <clears throat> Uh, how it's pretty easy to tell the how one person will dominate another and control another and, and it's fear back a few years ago we had some horses well some we had two horses and uh, we've gotten out of horses uh, uh, these days but a friend of mine who was taking care of the horses here in town, uh, she said something to me that was very interesting. She said, we control the horses because they look way bigger to us, to them. No, let me start again. We look way bigger to them than we really are. It's the way that they perceive us, that we're far bigger. So there's an element of fear that uh, controls that horse. That's pretty interesting because back in Noah's day, when he parked the ark, uh, God told Noah, he said, uh, the fear and the dread shall be a, uh, of you shall be upon every creature on the earth. There's a natural fear that an animal has of a, of a human being. But how, how does that, uh, what, what's the benefit of that? Well, that's how we control the animals, right? They're afraid of us. That's also how the government controls us. We're afraid of them and what they can do to us. And the howling mob that uh, will say, if you don't say this, do this, think this, then you're off the team and you're not going to be allowed to play with us. <laughs> and so fear strikes into the hearts of people. And the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But, but the government and insurance agents and some doctors and and uh, they say well if you drink too much coffee you you're gonna have a heart attack you know so we ought to be scared of that back in the 70s we we're afraid of coffee now it's sugar and uh, uh back in the 90s it was fat oh you can't eat too much fat or you'll you'll blow up well still living <laughs> 
And so what the Lord is trying to say is, is the fear of man bringeth a snare. And that it doesn't matter whether you're a little kid in the schoolyard and you have a bully that's trying to scare you. He's trying to control you. If you have a uh, somebody in authority who's trying to scare you, it's because he wants to control you. We have a prime minister here in Canada that is uh, has destroyed his reputation all over the world. And he has behaved as a schoolyard bully and he's trying to scare everybody into doing what he he wants them to do but don't be wicked <laughs> the wicked flee when no man pursue it but the righteous are as bold as a lion what do you have to do to be righteous well it's not uh you know you watch the old you hear these stories of the old knights in armor that would slay a dragon or they'd rescue a damsel from in distress or whatever and they would be they would be celebrated for their their tremendous heroism heroism and courage <clears throat> and then they would be deemed to be righteous but that's not really how you become righteous righteousness the bible says there's none righteous no not one so how do you get how do you get to be righteous well you need to have righteous given to you. It's a gift. And you get it when you get salvation. So the Lord gives you the gift of salvation. For by grace, grace is unmerited favor. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Supposing I had the salt salt is good jesus said right so i got this salt shaker and i said okay this is this is this is eternal life and i'll give it to you as a gift what would you have to what would you have to do to get it i'm offering it to you well you just take it with me so you just receive jesus christ as your savior you believe that he died for your sins he was buried and he rose again the third day you do that he'll give you his righteousness you'll be righteous and that boldness will come on come upon you when you need it and uh you'll go to heaven when you die which is the best part of the whole thing you spend eternity with the lord jesus christ okay that's it for today lord will we'll talk to you tomorrow the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion.